In this lesson, we are going to go over the first step of building our particle system. So it's all about the emitter itself. Okay, we are back in the same Niagara emitter that we have created in the previous lesson. This lesson is going to be very short as there is not a whole lot of modules to go over. So let's just quickly go over the ones that we play with a lot. When you're dealing with Niagara emitters, the attributes that you see on the right side are actually the properties of these modules. And you shouldn't get confused because when you click on the title of each one of these subcategories or main categories, it will show all the properties, all the variables for that whole category. So you can either individually change the values for each one of these modules, or if you want to see all the properties of all of these modules for that category, you can just click on this title of the main category and it will list the same modules here for you. So this is emitter state, spawn rate, and if you had any other modules, they will all show up on top of each other here. Since we have created this emitter based off of a template, it comes with some of these modules. Usually we do have these modules, we do need them, but if you have created an empty emitter, the first two modules that you definitely want to have is emitter state and spawn rate. Spawn rate is most of the time the module that you want to use. I'm going to delete that so you can see how you can create them. Like I'm going to click on this plus sign and I'm going to type in spawn rate. Okay. The emitter state is defining some of the general behaviors of your emitter, meaning that, for example, if I let it play, and since I've deleted that spawn rate, I'm going to just uh, increase the value here to, for example, 50 particles per second. So you can see that it immediately starts spawning these particles, and you have this timeline here, and it starts like going through this timeline. And a couple things about this timeline. First of all, this green bar here shows the actual duration of your emitter, which is defined in the emitter state. Loop duration is five seconds. If you change this to, for example, two seconds, you will see that it changes that, that green bar here. So meaning that your emitter is emitting particles for two seconds and then it loops back to the beginning of it. However, it doesn't kill the old particles. So it keeps generating particles every two seconds and it keeps adding them and adding them and adding them. This is what this loop duration does. For example, I mean, by default, we are having the loop behavior to infinite, meaning that it keeps generating particles or spawning particles. If I change that to only spawn once, it will spawn particles for two seconds and it's done. So now this loop duration comes in play. So if I change this to three seconds, it will generate particles for three seconds and it's done. Or you can say, I want to have maybe five loops and then stop it or three loops or whatever you decide here. So I change that loop behavior to multiple and I can say, I want to have three loops of three seconds. So it will generate particles for nine seconds. And then after nine seconds, it's over. All right. So um, that's the emitter state. There is nothing more in the emitter state. So we can move on to the next module that came in by default, but I just added that myself too, so that, which is the spawn rate, which defines, as I mentioned before, how many particles per second you want to spawn. So right now it's set to 50. I can change it to anything that I want and uh, we're done. There is another type of spawning particles, which is bursting particles, which is allowing you to only shoot some particles once and in one frame, and that's it. So let's just compare that to this spawn rate. I'm going to disable this spawn rate, so it's not going to function anymore temporarily. And I'm going to add, I know the name of that module, so it's called the spawn burst instantaneous. But you can always go to, through all of these lists and see what you have there. So again, since I knew what's the name of the module, I just typed that in. As you get more familiar with Niagara, you know what you're looking for. So you will just type that in here. So spawn burst instantaneous. And this allows you to spawn, for example, 50 particles only once. And that's it. So 50 particles. It's bursting those particles. You can give it a delay. So for example, you want it to happen after one second of the start of the emitter, start of the emitter life. So you can see that we are having 
the burst here with a delay of one second. Now you can see what's the difference between these two types of spawning particles. And again, you can see how this modularity of Niagara emitters is helping you because now you can enable or disable any of these. And right now I'm emitting 10 particles per frame and I'm also spawn bursting particles, 50 particles every loop. So I'm mixing and matching different types of spawnings here. So that's it for this lesson. There is not much for this emitter update, so we're going to just uh, move on to the next lesson, which is going to be controlling some other properties of the emitter plus initializing the particles themselves. So see you in the next lesson.